Hello, it's me, Rich Tang, and this is a, a very special Christmas Rich Tang's Let's Square Theatre podcast uh, with uh, the friend of the show, the worst interviewee we have ever had in the history of this show. I think it's fair to say he's been on twice and he's been lost every time. It's Richard Osman. Um, if you like these podcasts, you can support us by buying an uh, emergency questions book at gofasterstripe.com. 500 emergency questions for you and all your friends and family to enjoy. Uh, if it's Christmas time still, or even if it's going to be, there'll be another one along at some point. Unless uh, old uh, Osama bin Laden gets his way, uh, then uh, get Christmas emergency questions, uh, which is also at gofasterstripe.com. It's good all the year round. Uh, there's a lot of Christmas questions in there, but there are other questions too. Uh, and you can also go to Drip and give us some money there. Have I said that already? No? We've done a few of these in a row. Uh, <laughs> D.Rip slash Richard hyphen herring. Go to richchang.com slash gigs and find out where I am on tour. Have I said that already? Just let's watch the... I'm very tired. I've got a six-week-old child. He's a fucking cunt. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who has just found out that his daughter created the Muppets. It's Richard Harry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Christmas! Yeah. Welcome to. <laughs> welcome. We work. We work all the time here. We work. No weeks off. Uh, so, um, welcome to uh, Rich Change Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I was talking to the uh, fake Paul McCartney the other day. He's uh, <laughs> the original one died in a car crash in 1963, and this guy was drafted. It was lucky. Just they rang him up and said. Oh, Paul McCartney's just died. Oh, well, you look a bit like him. Will you come and um, be in the Beatles? He said, yeah, I've got nothing else on. Uh, he calls it Rahelas to us. I don't know if you know how that's going to catch on. Yeah, my daughter is now in two and three quarters and uh, started to lie. It's, my, it's great. I was with my daughter today playing in a room and there were some pictures on the floor that we're going to hang in the walls later of all the Muppets, uh, little cartoon drawings of all the Muppets. And she pointed at one and said, I painted that. I said, dude, that's really, it's amazing. I've seen a lot of her paintings, they're not. They're generally not that good. It was a very, it was like Grover or someone. It was a really, then she said another, I painted that as well. So that's good. There was a picture of her, a photo of her and her grandma, to get, her great grandma together. Uh, she said, I painted that as well. That is very photo realistic. That is, you've done an amazing. But I thought maybe she did, you know, I suddenly wonder what if she, she could be the reincarnation of Jim Henson, couldn't she? That could be his, yeah, I made that up. Man. Um, that's what I'm going to go for. I'm hoping to uh, make the make some money from her uh, as uh, the creator of the map. She's also she started um, we she, she started nursery and she got her, her face painted like a tiger uh, the other day. Came home with her face painted like a tiger and really li loved it. And we had to wash it off and she cried for you know for ages. And um, so we the only way we could stop her crying was then we'd buy some face paints and do it. And she's now living as a tiger. That is how she. <laughs> and in this day and age, she identifies as a tiger. And you're not allowed to say no. You're not a tiger. <laughs> We have to carry on. I've actually wear this T-shirt in order to <laughs> convince her she is a tiger, and she's. Let's we'll see how that goes. Uh, I was playing uh, Bristol uh, last night. I oh, was sorry, back on the International Men's Day in November, the 19th of November. <laughs> and uh, I won't play the Colston Hall in Bristol because the Colston Hall, um, you may know, is um, it's not because it's way too big for me. It's because uh, it's named after a slave owner, and I don't approve of that. So that's an awful. Thing. I, I played the old Vic, but I discovered last night that is named after an 18th century paedophile. So it's, uh, it's these who were celebrated for a while. The things have changed. Old oh, Vic. Yeah, he fucks kids, but he's all right. It was a different time. It was a different time. Good. I didn't know, I didn't know if that joke would work in London, but it, it, went very, it went very well in Bristol. So I thought I'd try it again. Okay, so we're going to crack straight on. Uh, my first guest, I mean, sorry, the guest this week uh, is... <laughs> He's probably best known. I was going to choose him as being best known as Heat Magazine Weirdest Crush 2011. 
But I went back and checked the first time he was on and that's how I introduced him last time. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably best known as the executive producer of Ban This Filth. That's why we're, at, that's why we're all here. Take him to task over that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Richard Osman! <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Come sit down. Make yourself at home. Thank you. I haven't thought about Ban This Filth for a while. Have you not? Can you tell me about it? I, couldn't, I, I don't remember Ban This Do you not remember? Filth. It was on Channel 4 and it was three pensioners. They were all over 80. And they, it was like Eurotrash. They had to introduce sort of vaguely pornographic kind of stories from around Europe <laughs> as if they were concerned citizens. Uh, they would have to say, look, at this is awful. This is a film about a woman pretending her car has broken down. And uh, that, I, must, I must renew my AA membership. Uh, it was the only show I've ever done where one of the presenters fell asleep. <laughs> actually, actually on camera. Wow. Pamela. Could, it could happen tonight. Yeah, I thought oh, you could yeah. say one of the presenters died. To do it. So the only show I've done where one of the people in it died of natural causes during the course... Of the show. No, okay, fair enough. Uh, so, um, <laughs> it's lovely to have you back. It's uh, to I was. Be back. I saw my mum yesterday when I was in. Oh Canada. yeah. You were quite I rude. saw. I saw your mum. <laughs> when was it? <laughs> Tuesday. Is she? Is she all right? Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, she was a little. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dad isn't able to walk at the moment, so I don't know if you had anything to do with that. <laughs> Genuinely. Listen, uh, listen I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a metrosexual. What can I tell you? <laughs> he's got a little bed set up in the lounge. He's had an operation on his leg. He's a very old man. Uh, so, um, get well soon, Dad. I just made loads of jokes about how this would be the last time I saw him, but I, I've been making those jokes <laughs> since I was 14. So. One, one, day, one day they'll pay off. <laughs> they will, <Yeah>. one day. <laughs> and I'll be done. Yes! I knew, I knew that would work. <laughs> I'm like Nostradamus. Uh, so, um... Last time we were on, uh, we were talking about Two Tribes, and I, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I sang you a version of the theme tune for Two Tribes okay. that you did not use, I noticed. Oh, really? Yeah. I presume, because presume, you're with Avalon, aren't you? I, I, assume, <laughs> I assume they asked for too much money. Well, I don't know. But, I, you know, they, Two Tribes isn't on anymore. No, it's so correct. Just... <laughs> Maybe if you use my oh, theme yeah. tune. And that's interesting because I'm just thinking of all the other big hits that you've done the theme tune to. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of your theme tune to Bake Off. It's good. It's a load of people in a tent. They're all baking cakes. It's a lot of fun. There's Mel and Sue. Oh no, it's Noel and, and Sandy Toxvig. It's all changed around. Um, you are. You're a modern day Dennis Ward. <laughs> I was going to ask if you want me to do a theme tune to House of Games. Yes, please. Yeah, OK. I think there's an easy one. It's House of Games. It's, uh, there's a house and it's got games in it. I've only seen one episode, so I can't really talk about what it's about. It was a while ago. Uh, it seemed quite good, though. You could win a onesie. That's really good. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, I'll say this, it's better than your two tribes one. Yeah, okay. Well, if you use that in, I think you might have a hit on your hands. Uh, so, House of Games, mm. it's sort of you copied it off uh, Taskmaster. You've seen Taskmaster and copied Taskmaster. I have seen Taskmaster. No, that's interesting. Have that you it's, been in Taskmaster? That I was in Taskmaster. This is what I was talking to Alex Horn about this the other day. It's interesting how telly works sometimes because uh, to sell a show, it has to be a bit like two other shows that are successful, is the truth. <laughs> and for a long time, I've tried to sell a show which is the same people come back and do a quiz against each other. They come back all week. And everyone's always said, no, you can't. You can't have the same people. It's got to be different people because people won't want to watch the same people. It has to be different people. You can't. No, people won't have that because think of all the hit shows. It's always different people. <laughs> so, and then as soon as Taskmaster comes out, you know, on Dave, who are very good at sort of doing different things, you can go in and say, oh, you know that quiz I was talking about? Uh, but, well, I'll tell you what happens. People come back on and they go, oh, I go, you know, like in Taskmaster. <laughs> and they go, hold on a minute, like in Taskmaster, you say. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you get a commission. So I did thank Alex for that. But it's, um, yeah, it's a weird one. They, they, they always have to tick. It's like with every, any yeah, yeah. commercial endeavour. You, you have to tick two different boxes that have been successful in other genres. And, yes. uh, and, and you can sell it. But then the f someone has to take the punt, don't they, on the first one, the first one to do it. You'd think you'd always want to be the person who takes the punt on the thing that becomes... Well, know, my granddad always used to say to me as a policeman, he always used to say, if you're called to a fight in a pub, make sure you're second through the door. That was his... Uh, <laughs> and, that's, and that's been my creative credo. It's true, because you copied Family Fortunes, that was pointless. Yeah. 
and you cop it. <laughs> Just True. turned it round. Yeah. It's good. I've been on Pointless twice since uh, I think we last spoke to you. You have, haven't you? I, think, I can't remember if I've won a Pointless trophy yet. <laughs> I we, should, out... we should edit together all of your performances and all the episodes are pointless and yeah. just so we could stick that out as a little 14 second YouTube clip. <laughs> You're very rude to me on the third time I was on Pointless. <laughs> I said I was, I've got one question wrong and the whole time I've been on Pointless, yeah. admittedly it was the first one. I was forced into it. Yeah. It was an educated gamble. Yeah. Well, you, um, you say educated. <laughs> <laughs> had lots of answers. Since then, I've had a pointless answer. Yeah. I've been let down by my, uh, my partners all the time. So my wife was my final partner. Yeah. And actually, someone tweeted saying, it's like, you're playing pointless and your wife is playing family fortunes. So that, is, <laughs> that, is, that was basically, we'd go on, she'd give the highest possible answer and I'd have to come in with a low answer. It was very exciting, the last one. Yeah. It was beaten by Wolfie R Robert Lindsay from yeah, yeah, yeah. Citizen Smith. He's a good person to be beaten yeah. by, isn't he? Yeah, it was all right. And his, his daughter was the... the real brains behind it's that. I mean, we don't, we could spend a lot of time talking about it, and we're going to. <laughs> Beat the, took the Osmonds out. The Osmond brothers destroyed them. They were made, the Osmond brothers were amazing on that, because one of them would, the, as we'd go through, my wife would give a high answer, I'd think, oh, we're going home. One of the Osmonds would give a terrible answer, an yeah. answer that didn't make, there was, like, he'd been given the answers to a different question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the other, you think, oh, we're going to be all right. And then the other Osmond, and it was a different one each time would come in with a brilliant answer that made me think, oh, fuck, I'm going home. There it is. Yeah, that's, that's Osmond's for you. Yeah. What can I tell they you? There's, there's a lot of them. We've had Jimmy Osmond on a few Have times. You? He really looks like my cousin Steve. I mean, he really <laughs> looks like him. And I know our names are spelt differently, yeah. but there's definitely, there's some, there's some family connection there. Yeah. At well, least to probably... cousin Steve. Yeah. As my, I was at my dad's funeral last year. Um, sorry to bring that up. Uh, and uh, no, it's all right. So uh, I feel bad about joking I'm about not, my I'm dad dying now. I, I didn't. If I, I'd known your dad was dead, I wouldn't have made a joke about my dad. My living dad. Being... Statistically, <laughs> it was like, yeah. So your dad's just—he's in a bed in the living room. I wish my dad was. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't give her one more day. <laughs> Neither of our dads can walk very well. That is. So let's yeah, look at what we got in common. <laughs> Some truth in that. No, that's not. It's 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 it's, uh, it, it, it's an estranged side of the family, so it wasn't. Uh, we, we weren't particularly close. But yeah, my cousin Steve gets up and does this oration, and I think, geez, you are like you are little Jimmy Osmond, the spit, <laughs> the absolute spit of the guy. Is he the spit of little Jimmy Osmond, or is he the spit of uh, he's Jimmy the, Osmond? To be now? fair, he's the spit of the older, yeah, the, yeah. Side, the, the middle aged Jimmy Osmond. Yeah. To be fair, I find that it's weird when people who were famous when their children grow. So like David Cassidy, sadly died in back in November. You'll remember. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you kind of how can he be dead? He's only fifteen. I didn't read that he had died back. Did, did, was yeah, that, did that happen did. on roughly around the nineteenth? It was roughly oh. around there. I didn't know uh, that. But it's kind of weird. He was like sixty-seven or some seventy-two or something. It doesn't seem possible that he could be. How could he be young? Yeah, and then old. And then old. How did that? That's weird. It is weird. That's like when I watched. Pointless on challenge. You know, <laughs> I thought we're going to exist in this like, sort of Doctor Who universe for years now. It's very successful. You do, what was it? Your two thousandth episode or thousandth episode that you swapped over oh, we swapped roles? Swapped over on the thousandth. Thousandth, thousandth episode. episode yeah. A thousand episodes, incredible. Did you enjoy doing uh, the other job? Yes, I did enjoy it. It's really, <laughs> I, you know, I, listen. I give Zander a lot of stick because I think what he does is easy, and it turns out it's quite difficult because he's so effortlessly charming. And I kept thinking, well, I've seen you do this a thousand times, mate. I know how to go. Uh, good evening, welcome to Pointless. I'm Richard Osman. This show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. Oh, that's fucking easy. Yeah. Uh, then, but then I very quickly forgot to go. Oh, you know, uh, it's the second pass with the second. To, to, what do you say? What is it you say? Uh, yeah, I, so I liked it for for an episode. It's nice yeah. to nice to stretch my legs. Do you think you would have done a thousand episodes if you cast it the other way around? Christ, no. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, he was pretty rubbish at what I do as well. To yeah. be fair, we were both equally bad at each yeah. other's jobs. That's the nice um, that's a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good show, Pointless. Thank you. How many times do you think someone can go on it and not win <laughs> before it's sort of embarrassing that they... Well, what, before it's embarrassing? Yeah. <laughs> I would say once. Uh, and a statistic, it'd be interesting to see. Yeah. It's, uh, there's only one way to find out, yeah. I guess. Can you keep it... I think you should keep the series going until I win. I can be like the Ravens in the Tower of London. If I actually win one, then you have to stop. Well, put it this it. way. Put it this way. Jedward won on their third appearance. <laughs> You know, 
<laughs> well, I'd have won if I'd been on with Jedward. Either, either of the two of Jedwards, so that would have been fine. Um, would you think of taking it to Channel 4 and spending more money on it and doing pointless. a bake-off? Yeah, do no, I, no, no, that wouldn't be for me. I support uh, uh, Love Productions taking Bake Off to Channel 4. I buy yeah. that 100% because, you know, they they sweated blood over that show and it's their show and they invented it and you've got to make as much money out of, as possible out of something and, you know, it's got a limited shelf life. But the point is, I think, um, uh, I think, you know, it's an unusual, it's a very weird little British little show and I think the BBC have been so amazing with it and yeah. looked after it and looked after us and keep promoting us bit by bit and let us be ourselves all the way through. I think we we would have too much loyalty as because I'm the presenter and the producer. Yeah. I, I you would have to persuade both the presenter and the producer to say <laughs> so the producer would take it in a heartbeat. But the, but yeah. the but the presenter I think would would uh, would stay on the That's BBC. It's complicated, isn't it? And if um Alexander Armstrong were to die. Yes. I mean, listen, it's going to happen at yeah, some point. Yeah, he's we, we, not immortal. We must all prepare ourselves <laughs> for that eventuality. Would you recast his... I, I would oh, be available. In a heartbeat, I yeah. would recast him. <laughs> uh, no, uh, well, listen, it'd be lovely to have you there. There is, there is a slight cue. Right. Uh, Sue Barker is my first choice. <laughs> As host, I think that'd be nice. You'd bring a nice, refreshing yeah. kind of a, Sue Barker, then uh, then Chico, then you. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. This could be a, a movie where I kill Sue Barker and, and, and Chico. Chico and and Alexander Armstrong. Oh wow! <laughs> to, to get to find my rightful place. Do, as a presenter, do you get a free uh, pointless trophy, or do you not, are you not allowed to have? I do have a pointless trophy. I got a pointless yeah. trophy, and I, there's, there was a special thousandth episode pointless trophy as well, oh. uh, which I have yeah. at some point. Which at some, you know, if I ever need to, you know, if I ever get a big tax bill or something, yeah. then before I go on Dancing on Ice, I'll, 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 I'll sell that. <laughs> I think if one. Can you imagine going on Dancing on Ice? By the way, That'd no. Be, what, what would be your least favourite reality show? If they, I if mean, you got I think call? Dancing on Ice would be. I really, I'm terrible. I hate skating and I can't do it. My wife, my yeah. wife's made me do a lot of things on, well, on dangerous surfaces that make me think she might be trying to get rid of me. She made, she made me go skiing, which I didn't like, and she oh, made me go ice skating, which I just couldn't do. Yeah, I did it impossible. when I was 15, but I, I had to walk around the edge, and I was still having a terrible, terrible time. Uh, so but, I if would they, hate... but if they rang up your agent and say, but 125 grand. I don't think I would. Uh, you know, money's not that important to 175 me. 175 grand. <laughs> 180 grand? <laughs> I'm, you know, I thought this. There'd come a point, right? There might come a point. I don't know if I would. I, I think it, 190. Uh, it, opens you up. <laughs> it opens you up to a whole different world. You know, it changes who you are, doesn't it? And then you become, a, then you're a celebrity. I I've think done. So. I mean, yeah. I've done pointless celebrities. I don't think anyone's, that doesn't really count. Uh, and I've, I did, I was in a boat race. I did a boat race oh, uh, you did reality that, did you? show. Okay. Which, you know, but again, I kind of worked out that there's so many people in that you'll be able to sort of hide at the back. Yeah, you hide away. Um, so I, didn't re I wouldn't like to do the jungle and all that. I've been sort of approached. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't mind. I'd, I'd like to eat all the stuff, but just on my own without being filmed. <laughs> I'd like to do uh, my celebrity get me out of here, but not film it. I was watching I'm it just last, on my own. I was watching it last night, and they said, oh, you're going to have to have, if you don't have the food, you're going to have to have rice and beans. You just thought, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> I don't mind that. Sit, sit and chat to Stanley Johnson, have some rice and beans. Yeah. Talk to Amir Khan about what it's like to be a boxer. Yeah. I don't mind that. <laughs> I, mean, I could do with the losing weight, so I'd be happy, I'd be happy to... You get free penises, don't you? Yeah, as many, you eat as many penises. Oh, as many penises as you want. I'll tell you what, yeah. like mother, like son. <laughs> I asked her if she wanted to make a comment, a past comment. She didn't. She, was, she rose above it. Yeah, but yeah. I should film her at the beginning. Oh, dear. Oh, poor old mum. Uh, <laughs> so you've written this fight with this. With this is the battle of the uh, Christmas books that are mm. also uh, yours is a much more professionally produced than mine. I have to say, uh, th these are the two. I don't know if you can spot which one's written by someone off the telly and which one's a bloke who's printed it himself. Uh, but this is uh, this is your World Cup of everything, which is mm. uh, you've been doing online. In fact, you've been. I read in the book that you've been doing this since you were a child on your own. Is that correct? I did. I, I, I recall yeah, the first one I ever did was I did a World Cup of bands and tell you how long ago it was. The final was Spandau Ballet versus Culture Club. <laughs> so that must have been... 
I think they'd, 82 they'd still be something. in the final. They'd still make the final. That'd be close, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was the only voter in that. You know, yeah, something I do online for, um, I, for, for, for charity. And I just thought, people always, you know, you, you, you run these things and you say, what's the best chocolate bar, which we will get onto. Uh, and, you know, you get two million votes and there's all this kind of stuff. And at the end, they, you get the winner and people go, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you want? I don't know what you want me to say. I mean, this, this has been the whole point of the thing. So I thought, I, look, so in this, I've done loads of different World Cups that you can just do at home, and I've drawn little wall charts, and there's, that you can do World Cup of uh, chocolate, there's biscuits, there's British bands, there's sitcoms, and it's just to argue about at Christmas. But, um, yeah, so you cannot, once you've done that, you can't then argue. Yeah. You know, because you've got, you had your own World Cup winner. Well, it's a lot of fun, and what I like, I often have to read a book for this show, and it's oh. quite hard work, because people have written, written like a proper book. Can you imagine? But uh, this, <laughs> this is just a load of rubbish put together. It's really easy yeah. to... It's entertaining, It's, it's very though. entertaining. I I'm, 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 to be honest, I could talk to you about it all, all the... All day because just the chocolate, the chocolates one, which is you know what I think what I first saw on Twitter when you were doing is it is an amazingly contentious thing, but it does feel like I want to take this to my Christmas and play this at Christmas dinner. I was yeah. saying to you backstage, which I know is impossible, you the book should come with a selection box uh -huh. where all the chocolate manufacturers just like it's Christmas, it's like the Armistice Day football yeah. match, they all just say, Hey, we're all the same, but let's I just make a selection gonna, box. If you're going to buy the book, then you could you could. As an extra, you could buy the chocolate as well. Yeah. That would be a nice gift. Yeah, it'd be nice someone. to just have it in a big box, a massive box with your face on it. <laughs> e, just covered in chocolate. I don't know, I think that would be more off-putting in yeah. some ways. But also, <laughs> you'd, you'd, that would, you'd charge like twice as much for that. Yeah. Just buy it all yourself and stick yeah, it in the could. Tesco's bag. But you have to and make... And tape around the Tesco's bag. Yeah, for, fi for 15 and 16, you have to choose two of your own, though, which is a nice touch. Thanks. Uh, but that makes it hard to buy them in advance, doesn't it? Because you have to decide between the lot of you which are the oh, which are 15 yeah, and 16. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But, you know, you could be prescriptive. Yeah, and all of them, there's there's like 32, and I've, but I've left a couple of spaces because people always say, oh, I can't believe you didn't have spicy tomato snacks in the World <laughs> Cup. But, like, they're going to get past the first round. Uh, so, yeah, I left a couple of gaps so your, your family's favourite can go in there. Would you do a World Cup of which chocolate bars are best to put up your anus? <laughs> Gosh, I've been asked that a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't think no. I would, no. but I guess a drifter. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that's narrow but would have has some structural integrity. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I knew you'd be the man to ask. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. Anything, yeah. You wouldn't want anything. Yeah, drifters an odd was an odd name for a chocolate bar. Yes, yeah, so it might. Yeah, it's like I hobo. Mean, it's either a. <laughs> It's either got like the connotations of like a sort of floating piece of feces, yeah, or a, or a dead homeless person, a little bit that isn't you've it? murdered and turned into chocolate. Yeah, I wonder bars. what they, I wonder what they're thinking behind that. I always think Brexit would be a good name for a chocolate bar. Yeah. I don't know what it would be, but it'd have, it'd have two fingers. It's up to you to what to do with it. Yeah, <laughs> it would definitely win my World Cup. Uh, so. I like the fact you don't like Twix. I find I think Twix is the Terrible. average is the most average chocolate bar. Yeah, it's not even a chocolate bar no. in my opinion. No, it's a biscuit. Well, you you don't like bars that are just have a very light coating of chocolate on them. Well, no, because what is that? Yeah. That is, you know, that's essentially we were talking backstage with Ben, your producer, about toffee crisps. Yeah. Which have the lot. I mean, come <laughs> on. I mean, there's so little chocolate on a toffee crisp. I think it's fucking outrageous. It is. <laughs> I've Although been... they are in there, to to Toffee Chris, so you can vote for them, but I wouldn't yeah. be voting for them. There's, what, what is, it's, it's not just the game, because you've got lots of facts and lots of um, quizzes and extra stuff, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's I, 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 I was playing on my own and it's a lot of fun, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play at Christmas. I didn't know that dairy milk was originally going to be called Highland milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then someone decided to call it dairy milk, which I think suddenly makes me suspicious of it, because... All milk's dairy milk, isn't it? So it makes, well, is no, it, almond milk and stuff isn't. Is what milk isn't? Almond milk, soy almond milk, milk. People who are but dairy that, intolerant. But the worst thing about that is they say in their adverts a glass and a half in every bar. Yeah. You think, yeah, but how big is the glass? That's literally, <laughs> that's literally meaningless. It's like when they say you've got to drink eight glasses of water a day. You do, how, how much is that? Yeah, <laughs> Just tell me how much water yeah. I've got to drink. Exactly. It's just, you've got to do it... As long as you do it eight times, however, whatever quantity is, it's going to be fine. What do you um, think the best chocolate bar is? I think... I'm, I'm slightly with you. I got, I got very obsessed with twirls. Mm, I like fun. all of the, the, the family of twirls, which, again, I would like to see a pack come out that is one twirl, one flake, and one ripple, just in one pack, and you open them up. 
Again, it means some chocolate manufacturers coming together, settling their differences. That's a, well, I'm like that with Maltesers and, and Minstrels, which yes. I think I'd love to see them come together and just have one pack. But it's, yeah. you can't cross the streams, I don't think. Yeah. It's, like, it's like Marvel and DC coming together. I don't, I, I don't think you can do it. But you could buy one of each and just put them in a bowl. You could, but what's the, you know, what's the point in that? <laughs> but you know, I mean, that, you could sort of say that about anything. Yeah. You know, you don't, why do you go to a restaurant where you could just buy a steak and buy some chips and cook it at home? <laughs> Because you can do any of those things, but what if someone's done it for you and you see it in it a shop? Nice. And then because the actual act of buying it triggers your pleasure centres. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like this book as well because I, I am name-checked in this book. So if, the, if, other, if other authors were as good... I'd spend a lot of time talking about that? their books. Okay. On page 34, um, here are some clues to famous people who have an animal somewhere in their name. Name the famous people, please, in a quiz I'm calling The Weakest Mink. Hosted by Cat Dealey and Richard Herring. Hey, I would, there you go. So I would love to, uh, I, if I'm, I accept the job if that comes up. <laughs> I'd just quite like to hang around with Cat Dealey, to be honest. She's kind of big in LA now. Yeah, she, she is, isn't she? Yeah. It's interesting. Some people, when they disappear, it's because they've disappeared. Yeah. And some people, when they disappear, it's because they're massive in America and you don't know. And she does look like a cat, doesn't she? She's um, sort of got a cat like face. I don't know. I, to me, she yeah. looks like a woman. Okay. <laughs> It's cat like mm -hmm. But that, you know, listen, that's, uh, I, my eyesight is not great. So it's, listen, you, possibly you're right. Yeah. I'm in loads of books. I'm in, uh, I'm in, uh, I'm in loads I'm of in books. Loads of books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in uh, Bridget Jones's diary. No way. And that's a fictional book and I'm in it. Uh, what's your... Bridget Jones comes to Edinburgh. Yeah. And she comes to see my, the, my show in Edinburgh that I was doing the year she wrote the Helen really? Fielding. Really? I presume Helen Fielding came to see my show. It was an odd, even at the time, it was an odd person to choose because it was 1993 or something and we hadn't even been on TV. Did she review it in the book at all? Um, no, she didn't, luckily. No, but that's, no, that's, a, that's a bad yeah. sign because if okay. she'd liked it, she would have she gone, and it was amazing. <laughs> that's true, <laughs> that's true. But she's too nice to kind of go, yeah, it, you know what? Yeah. Needed work. Yeah. <laughs> but then I auditioned to be in uh, Bridget Jones' The the Bridget Jones's Baby, the movie, and I didn't get the part. I should have gone in with the book and said, you have yeah. to, I'm in the book. Someone else played me, no, it was... Do you have to do different. auditions? I didn't, know, didn't even know you acted. Yeah, no, well, I have to do... I've, 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 tr I've tried to audition for a few things. <laughs> okay. And not for very... I mean, they were terrible parts. I was nearly in Sherlock as, a, as an angry man. Oh, uh, really? Annoyed man. I can't even remember what he was... The, but then I saw the episode of Sherlock and the character is, you don't even see the bloke oh, saying okay. it. It seemed like something that wasn't worth going in for an audition for, I have to say. I should. If they do a remake of Slumdog Millionaire, but yeah. the plot is someone whose entire life story means he gets everything wrong, yeah. you'd be a shoe in <laughs> like, there's, like every question, there's a reason, like something happened in his life where he missed that particular episode or something. <laughs> or he's in a relationship with someone, honestly, you know, she hated friends, so I never watched it. That's a good idea for a film. Yeah. I could have been in. I was nearly in pointless this week. They rang me up again. It was the, uh, the last time I was on. I was rung up because uh, John Stapleton and Lynn Folds Wood had pulled out at the last minute, <laughs> which I think shows where I am in the celebrity firm. <laughs> and I don't know who pulled out this time, but at uh, the last minute I was in Manchester and I couldn't do it. So that they, and, but I could have technically made it, but they told me I'd be teamed up with Helen Ledger, and I decided that I would lose if I was teamed up with Helen Ledger. So I said I wasn't available. We'll and see then, whether I made the right choice or not when Helen Ledger is on Point and Celebrities. We will. I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine if she'd been teamed up with me. It couldn't, it couldn't have worked out, could it? Um, so, good. Well, it's a fantastic book. I think but it's you. not as good as Christmas Emergency Questions. No, absolutely. Look, I accept that. Question. Look, this is... Again, you know, always some, be second through the door. You've got, you've got some... You've got some emergency questions in here near the front, actually. Page. Oh, have I? Well, they would work as emergency questions um, that you answer within the book. So that, okay. Um, I can't remember where they were. They were quite early they on. in the but, introduction? They are, but I can't find them now. Is it before that bit? I don't know. I woke up every introduction. I think it was page four. Here they are. <laughs> I'll ask you some of the questions okay. you asked. Who or what is the Nando in Nando's? Oh, yeah. Well, if, if you want to find out, you have to buy the book. Okay. Is he going to say that to all of these? <laughs> But no, he was a sound engineer called Fernando who oh. uh, went out for chicken in uh, Johannesburg into a Mozambican chicken joint in Johannesburg. Right. And that's where Nando's comes from. Oh. And Nando is for Nando's. Fernando's. Fernando's, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. and, and, and Piri Piri sauce is Mozambican. It's Portuguese, but okay. Mozambique is a Portuguese colony. Honestly, it's full of stuff like that. Yeah. It's fascinating. 
And are wagon... You don't have to answer them all now. Are wagon wheels really smaller than they used to be? That's a good emergency question. Uh, I can't they remember. Are. But they they're thinner. Are. There's, there's, there's a dimension thing. In Australia, they're the same. Are they? But over here, the, the diameter is smaller, but they're thicker. Oh, OK. So they're actually the same. Weight. Uh, and on the back it says, uh, there's a question, oh no, it's, maybe it's here. Uh, I can answer this question. What sitcom f first used the title Only Fools and Horses? It was Only Fools and Horses. It was uh, It was, because it was first called Only Fools and Horses. So it was called Only Fools and Horses. It was the title of, a, it was the title <laughs> of an episode of another sitcom. Oh, was it? Which has already been mentioned. Uh, Starring your nemesis, uh, Robert Lindsay. Robert Lindsay, Citizen Smith. Yeah, it was wow. an episode of Citizen Smith, written by John Sullivan, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good. So he nicked it off himself, <laughs> which is okay. It is, that is, that's allowed. Um, good. Uh, you played a removal man in Drop the Dead Donkey, is that true? That is true, yeah. Did you? The, I was in the last ever scene of Drop the Dead Donkey. Were you? Be only because that's written by uh, Andy Hamilton and Guy Jenkin, and Guy Jenkin is my height. Right. And the very last scene, they're clearing out the offices of the, of, of, of the newsroom, and Guy wanted to be one of the removal men, and he needed someone as tall as him to take the other end of the table. <laughs> and I was the only person who was as tall as Guy Jenkins. So, yeah, I... I oh, I come on, that would have been fun of him. I mean, Guy Jenkins and Andy and Hamilton Andy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That would have been... That would have been an awesome end yeah, to the that series. that would have been good. So, yeah, I am. Yeah, I was in that. Yeah, Is that the only... You've done little bits of acting as sort of yourself and things. You've been Not in... really. I did Not Going Out yeah. with Lee Matt. That's the only thing I did. Well, Murder and Successful sort of oh, acting. Oh, yeah. That was well, good. that's fun. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. I had to blow on Tom Davis' uh, penis. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you got the job. But that then what happened once you... <laughs> it, it's gay. You're quiet. <laughs> It's amazing my mum didn't get the role. So it's, <laughs> it's, uh, you're quite, I mean, you're sort of a more knowing and a slightly cooler celebrity and they usually have a sort of slightly naffer people on murder. I think the previous it? series, they'd, they, they, they'd gone down the reality TV route. Yeah. But this one, I think, you know, because they had um, Lorraine Kelly, they had Martin That's Kemp, yes. uh, Reggie Yates, I think, and uh, uh, Professor Green. I can't call him pro green. I can't do that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think they went for a, for a slightly different. Um, yeah, it's the most fun. It was. I, I love really it. love that show. It's an amazing it's show. Tom Again, Davis that's a show that you think, how the hell did anyone commission that show? Yeah, really, with that one. <laughs> but you really do. That's quite. That's quite. That's quite a tough sell. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you took it quite seriously. Did you? Did you get the correct murder at the end? I can't remember. Oh yeah. You got it right. Yeah. They said, look, you're the you're the, you, you're only the, the you're only the third person to guess the correct murderer, and you're the first person to to guess the murderer for the right reason. <laughs> <laughs> but like I was obsessed. I was really looking for clues. I, you know, I genuinely. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, hold on a minute. I was like looking at the receipts and all sorts of things. Yeah. I loved it. I mean, given there's only three choices and there've yeah. been quite a lot of episodes, that that defies statistical probability. It's weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I was very proud of myself. Yeah, well done. Thank you. <laughs> You've got to listen. I'm not because I'm not a TV because I'm a producer and I've never asked to be on front of camera and all that kind of stuff. If I do th something, I have to find a way of making it entertaining for me, right? Because I'm not doing it for. Oh yeah, I think I'd like to show everyone how amazing I am and do <laughs> blah blah blah. I sort of think, well, my kids love that show and I love Tom. Uh, and but w why would it be fun? And I thought, well, it would be fun to try and solve a, a murder. Yeah. And it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I, I love that show. I think it's. I think it's incredible. Uh, and I got I've... to fire a gun at the end. Did you? Mm. So it wasn't a real gun. Did you? Oh, you had to shoot the person who you thought was responsible. Yeah. I do remember it, yes. It's good. Um, Thanks. What is the, this is a question you asked on Twitter that I think is a good emergency question. Okay. What is the most important thing you have unplugged to charge your phone? But it, you know what? And the, the reason I asked that question is because it's, it's obsessional. Yeah. I always think they're like, you know those old cartoons you used to get of someone in the desert? Like reaching an oasis and they're like kind of like dried out and they just you know they're close to death through you know through thirst you would genuinely be the first thing you would ask is is there anywhere i can plug my iphone in before you ask for water uh but yeah and everyone as always on twitter if you ask something everyone gives the same reply so everyone goes life support machine yeah and you just you just look just look to see if someone else has said life support machine before you but do do you think and, anyone has unplugged a life support yeah. machine today? oh yeah i mean definitely People have been, you know, if you're in hospitals and stuff, sometimes you're there for a, a long time, and a lot of being in hospital is quite prosaic. Yeah. Uh, and you don't know what everything that is plugged in is. But if you're with someone who's clearly not at death's door, yeah. is not, you know, and something is plugged in, 
that's a piece of equipment. <laughs> but you sort of think, well, they're not going to die if I just charge my phone. I'm down Whereas to five percent. I, but yeah, and I have been here a long time. <laughs> you know, and you, you know, you just think I would just. I think that they would be happier. I see them sleeping now. I think they'd be happier if I was playing words with friends. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I bet people in hospitals. I think people yeah. plug stuff in all the time. Yeah. It's a problem, isn't it? You've got to basically find your own battery source that you can carry around with, the, with you. And I found quite a good one that lasts about four or five recharges, but it's pretty big. So it kind of means that you, you know, the mobility of the phone is slightly... That's the one thing. In 50 years' time, they will laugh at us. They'll laugh at us <laughs> for two things. One, you drove cars. That's, cr that's mental. Yeah that you were driving massive bits of metal at each other really, really <laughs> high speed, like bel belching stuff into the atmosphere, and you all knew it was killing everyone. Yeah. And two, what was this thing with batteries? <laughs> why, did, why did you not work out that X, Y, or Z? Well, oh God, if I'd been able to end that sentence, I could have yeah, cured it. It's been amazing. It's, it what, just if comes what if that's how we've done it? I just had to end that anecdote. Uh, but they would just go... It could be putting a drifter in your anus. You don't know till you've tried. Oh. No one's tried it. Do you reckon anybody Drif has tried it? <laughs> I don't... I don't think anyone's tried it and then thought, I'll plug this into my phone and see if it <laughs> charges it. I'm sure one no has been in. I bet no one's put a drifter in the rain. <laughs> Do you think? I, I bet think no they one definitely has. have. I think what? everything that could possibly in the go world. in an anus has gone into an anus. A drifter. There was a news story. This is, this is what I was going to open with. I forgot about it. There was a news story in November uh, about a Chinese man who had a live eel in his anus and had to have that removed. Really? How did that get up there? I mean, well, it'd be quite difficult, even if you were trying to get it out there. It's quite... But it can't have been live for long. Well, I mean, I think it can swim around in there, can't it? If it can live in a river, it can live up there. It's a bit of moisture. You think... It, sorry, just a bit. You live think in... anything that could live in a river <laughs> could live in your anus? In your anus, yeah, not on you, your anus. What, are you, your what anus. are you packing down there? <laughs> it's what have you got down there, an oxbow lace? <laughs> There's lots of ways it could happen. It could have been like frozen in a snowdrift and a man skiing and he uh, got caught on a tree and his pants came off and then he landed in the... Yeah. And then it would have thawed by the time he got to hospital in yeah. China. That's they they might, there's probably skiing line. in China. It's a big place. They do, yeah, they ski. In, they ski. I've been to yeah. China recently. Have you, have you skied place. in China? Of course not. I've never Wait, skied why, anywhere. Why did you go to China? Oh, my daughter is studying Chinese. Wow. Yeah. So I went there a few times. I love it. I yeah. loved it. You know how we... As a, as, a, as, a, as a nationality, yeah. we don't really care that other countries don't speak our language. We don't really care about other people's language. Yeah. We want to know, well, look, honestly, English is the thing, and so we're speaking English. The Chinese are like that with everything, and I really <laughs> like it. They think, they're like, you know what, there's one and a half billion of us. We honestly don't give a toss what you do, what you say, <laughs> what you think. You are so welcome in our country, and well, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, we're not, we're not fussed about you. We don't find you interesting. We don't find you <laughs> unique. You know, we have, honestly, we've got a lot going on, yeah. and you don't fit into it. And I they find that very refreshing. They must have been fascinating with you they might like just the height oh of yeah you. they loved it well my daughter was at a six foot and she you know she oh, just she... said she uh, when she came home she said i'm really gonna miss every single day like, walking down the street endlessly being told i'm beautiful she said literally <laughs> non-stop all day every day she's six foot they're just ev just everybody falling yeah. in love with her now she's in england she's like oh this is such a disappointment <laughs> is that why you kept going back to china just i want one chinese person to say i'm beautiful <laughs> yeah not a thing for no, me nothing no for i loved it though yeah Oh, that's nice. I'd recommend it. Um, well, isn't it hard to get into China? Is it, do you have to fill in some Oh, forms? you had to get on a plane, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah, you, had to go, you have to go on to Expedia. Yeah, yeah, so it is, yeah. It's not, um, yeah, you, can't, you can't just walk. We couldn't walk there now. Really? Yeah, okay. from, from Leicester Square. <laughs> that's good to know. Good, I'm going to ask you some emergency questions from my book, Christmas Emergency Questions, available from Go Faster Stripe. If you well, order it today, you'll long. be able to get it for, for, for Christmas. For do Christmas. you think? What's the exact date today? Well, today, I mean, it's it depends where people are watching. It's isn't the it? twenty. It's the twenty something. I know that. <laughs> I think we might be actually just putting this out a little bit early because I read your book and I thought I want everyone to buy Richard Osman's oh, amazing book kind. and have time time to order it from Amazon or similar delivery system. And uh, so I think we're going out on the. 17th of December. So early. it's the 17th today. Yeah, it is the 17th, so it's there's time to order this. That means I'm a year older than I was, is, is say, it? for example, on the 19th of November. <laughs> okay. It's the 20th of November is today, it? yeah. But it's, <laughs> some people just want it to be International Men's Day every day. That's, what you, <laughs> that's just what you want. Um, 
How old are you today? You're 49 on, in December. Uh, no, uh, to, what, today, yeah. the, the 17th of December, <laughs> yeah. I am 47. 47, huh? Yeah. Whereas well, I, I knew was, you were approaching your 50s. I was 46. Well, you're, My brother you're just turned young. 50. Because you wear a jacket, I think you have to be older than me. And yeah, then, you know, yeah. And then I find that that doesn't work. You have to kind of find, ask people what year they were born in. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah just so, the, yeah. the clothes they wear does not indicate it. No, that's really that's really helpful. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's the one question you have to ask to get people's star sign. The one thing that really is 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 the, their date of birth. It is. It helps. <laughs> question one hundred and twenty-six. If you're following at home, is it cheating to have sex with the robot Santa Claus? I'm not saying that all of this is just. <laughs> The other questions were... Is it cheating? Is it cheating There's on your a lot partner? To un- there is a lot to unwrap yeah. here. If you're in a relationship and yes. you had sex with a robot with Santa Claus... With a robot Santa Claus. Would that be kind Without of your partner's knowledge... I mean, that, that's not cheating, is it, if they don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the other way around. Isn't I think that right? It's, I think it's not cheating okay, if they no. do know. Yeah, sorry, no, that's what I meant, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I would have sex with a robot. I just kind of throw that out there. Like, really? Yeah, I think, listen, it's going to pass us by anyway. I don't think there's going to be as... No, it's progressing fast. Did you see that man on this morning? I mean, it's some way to go for me, but it's closer. You think? It's closer than I imagined. I think I could live without it. Okay. <laughs> we will see. Yeah, we'll cut, see. To, <laughs> cut to, I'm famously fucking a robot. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, the robot <laughs> fucking guy, the, the guy who used to be on Daytime Teddy who fucked all those robots. <laughs> Very rude heckle. Uh, so, um, do you think Christmas is celebrated on other planets? Hmm. Which ones, if you think it is? Oh, which ones? That's a much more specific question. Uh, well, I don't think it is. No. Um, I imagine, look, clearly there are other planets there that, uh, that have life yeah. on it. And clearly there are planets that have other life with consciousness on them. Yeah. Just because of the numbers. Uh, and if there are, then there are planets which have consciousness, which have celebrations yeah. at particular times. And there may be one that coincides with uh, our celebration. And it's probably to do with a religious thing. And then probably their version of Coca-Cola made Santa's <laughs> coat red. Uh, I would listen, statistically, everything that can possibly happen does happen. And if that's true, then everything that can happen does happen yeah. at least twice. So, yes. That's true. Okay, good. But I can't name the other planet. Okay. That's a good idea for a sitcom, isn't it? That what he just said. Uh, so, <laughs> what he just said. I'll get a good one now. Hold on. Might take me a little while. That was a good one. Okay. Uh, oh, this is, an int- this is a joke I used to do, but this is quite an interesting question. What became of the gold, frankincense and myrrh? They're mentioned there at the beginning of the Bible and we never hear about them again. <laughs> to a humble biblical family like the Christs, wouldn't that have been... <laughs> Wouldn't that have been the equivalent of a rollover lottery win? How come they still lived in relative poverty? Well, the frankincense, frankincense and myrrh are, yeah. uh, that you would just you, you would use them up. I don't suppose they would. Well, they're they're mainly... not going to re-gift them. You know, I think they would say. But also, if you <laughs> buy no frankincense, yeah. you would say, "Oh, because if the, who bought? Oh, the kings bought them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the kings. If the kings are hanging around, which they probably would do, because they've been a long." You know, it's a long old journey, so yeah. they'd probably stay over for the night. And the, during the evening, they would definitely go, oh, pop that frankincense on. You know that frankincense we bought you? Why don't you pop that on? And Mary began, oh, I didn't want to open it. I wanted to, I wanted to get that on eBay yeah. or whatever the version of eBay was yeah. back in those days. A, a market. Uh, I wanted to take that straight down the market. So that they would have used. And yeah. the myrrh, you know what myrrh is used for? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a drifter lubricant. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but the gold, yeah, certainly, yeah. certainly, that's the big mystery of the Bible is what happened to, to how much it Joseph's was, gold. It? Depends how it, it might would have not. been a fair amount. I mean, this is the son of God we're talking about. You wouldn't yeah. kind of just bring like a little bracelet or something. No. You know, you'd bring a lot of gold. It's true, wouldn't it? I wonder where that who siphoned that off. I wonder who nicked that. Yeah. Somebody, I, you know who nicked it? One of the shepherds. <laughs> you know what shepherds are like? <laughs> They're not listening to this. They're thieves. <laughs> Every one of them are thieves. <laughs> We have a lot of uh, shepherd fans. Um, I'll ask yeah, you but they're not, they're not paying you anything. <laughs> That's okay. Here we go. In the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, there's a lot about the Twelve Days of Christmas in this. And Muppet Christmas Carol is mainly that. In the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, do you think that along with the eight maids of milking, the true love received eight cows? Or do you think she was expected to provide the cattle from her own pocket? Because <laughs> that severely devalues the gift. But if the cows are included, that actually means she got 16 things that day, thus ruining the song. 
Well, I don't know, because you, you could argue that the, that the drummers also had drums. Yeah. You know, you can argue that, um, you know, the Lords were leaping over something. Yeah. Uh, I would say, do you know if you add together all of the presents in that story, across yeah. all the days, it's 365. Oh. Yeah, like the wow. days in a year. Wow, How cool. about that? I may have made that up. I think it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't sound true. Now, actually, no, yeah, that kind well, of works. Is that adding that? Is that adding... Yeah, one, and then three, three and, and then, then six, okay. and then ten, and then fifteen, and Someone so Someone get on. you calculate. David, you can... You can work that. He's, a nucle- he's a nuclear physicist. He's done no that way. in his head. That's you must good. be able to have to add up stuff like the 12 days of Christmas every day. No? No, got calculators. Yeah, three, I think it's 365. It's like if you add together all of the Roman numerals, it comes to uh, 1666. You can have that as well. It comes to infinity, I think. You add all of them together. Uh, no, because there's only, no, only once each. Okay, once each. Not like endlessly. Okay. That would be infinity. I can <laughs> confirm that. <laughs> There's some uh, non-Christmas ones in here as well. Uh. Have you ever hidden in? A, have you ever hidden in a Z bed? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Take a wild guess. <laughs> you weren't always this big. It would have to be. It'd have to be a capital Z. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever had anything removed from your body? That's a question that I'm sure you have. I don't. Oh, I have some cartilage from my knee. That's mm. about it. That's not that interesting, is mm. it? But yeah, that's it. That's all. But every time you have a haircut, really, yeah. it's mutilation, isn't it? Yeah. It's very weird. We seem to think that's all right, or cutting our fingernails and stuff. Yeah. And then as soon as it's something, you know, like internal, we're like, oh, I better go to hospital. You think you're so casual about, like, you have a shave every morning. Yeah. You're thinking that's just as kind of invasive as, as having your appendix out. But you don't get a surgeon in to, to you know, that's unless you're true. Zander, to, to, to give you a shave. <laughs> yeah. And you throw away your hair, don't you? And then a lot of these guys here were ruining the day they did that, thinking, why? Just threw that hair away, look at them now. Oh, I could have kept it. <laughs> no hair at all. Some so, people must, I bet, I bet some people keep every, all of that stuff. Yeah. You know that some people do. Yeah. Can you imagine? There'd be a lot of it. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a lot of hair. I have it, got a lot of hair. Quickly, right? It grows very fast. Yeah, imagine you kept all of I that. I wish I had now. Oh, what I wish I'd done. Room full of it. What I wished I'd done is taken a photo of every haircut I'd, uh, as I was having mm. it done. I wish I'd done that all through my whole life and then put it on a wall somewhere. Oh no! But you put it on Facebook and someone go, uh, "Amazing! This guy took a picture of every haircut he ever <laughs> yeah. Oh God, really? <laughs> uh, I've got a question for you. You grew up in Haywards Heath. Mm-hmm. Who is, is this your... in your book? Yeah. Who's no, your? No, this is my regular. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's it's really magic. niche. That's... that's a really niche book. Who it is? <laughs> It's in back in my regular book. Uh, what is the most famous person? Uh, who's your favourite famous person who came from Hayward? Oh Heath? goodness, I don't think there are any. I mean, literally, it's, it's honestly as a town because you know I'm interested in famous people. I, I always was. I don't think there's a single famous person. No one famous went to my school. That's definitely true. No one. Fa- no, not at all. Maybe like, maybe like my brother. Your brother and Brett Anderson. And Brett Anderson, yeah, that's, a, that's probably about it. I don't think anyone famous came from there. I meant to bring my computer on, but there was, there was a lot of... Uh, every single celebrity mentioned, I'll try and get on, on Wikipedia, had citation needed after them. So I was going to spend a lot of the interview asking you about that, and now I'm yeah, just going to do it myself. It doesn't, it doesn't, for some reason, breed celebrity. Uh, a sleepy little commuter town. Haywards Heath, etymology... Do you, know where, do you know where it came they from? They say it came from a highwayman, but I suspect it didn't. Oh, they say happened. he used to uh, roam the heath. Okay. Probably a dogger. <laughs> Might be he, used to ro- he used to roam the car park at the heath. Might be Nick Hayward. Right, here we go. Look at the, did you ever go to the town day, celebrated in early September, including fireworks at Victoria Park? No, I know Vicky Park, but I don't... Um, okay. Yeah. I think that's too close to bonfire night to have another firework-based celebration. It's quite... No, it's two months away. Come on. I think it's too close. I think fireworks are bad. Fireworks are bad. Yeah, I, I, I went to with fireworks that. with my daughter who didn't like it. And no, then, of course they are. Awful. Okay, here are all the people that need, and every single one has citation needed, which is I've never okay. seen. Jim Parks, the former cricketer. England and Sussex cricketer. Citation yeah. needed. Do you He's see him around? Wicketkeeper. Uh, Ridley was born no. in 1931, so he might not have been there. Richard Osman, second. Citation hey, yeah. needed. Okay. Just citation needed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's just, that's, that's been said before. Sam Cowan. The Manchester City and England footballer died in Hayward Heath in 1964. No, he's, not, he's not the only one. <laughs> Matthew Bowes, who plays Paul Lambert in ITV One's Emmerdale, grew up in Hayward Heath and attended Hayward Heath Sixth Form College. Really? Professor, I went to Hayward Heath Sixth Form yeah. College. 
Bosey. He must have been around your time. Bosey, MB. Professor Philip Payton, Payton, the historian and writer, attended Haywood Heath Grammar School. This is a terrible town I come from. (laughs) (laughs) Professor Sir Jack E. Baldwin, the organic chemist. Citation needed. Every single one, citation needed. Brett Anderson, definitely. Matt Osman. Yeah, I know he was there. The bassist. I was very near him. (laughs) Okay. Lawrence Osborne. Lawrence Osborne. The novelist and writer, citation needed. Oh, I'm thinking of, who am I thinking of? Lawrence Fishburne, I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have seen him. I thought I would have remembered I mean, that. there's loads. It goes with Greta Sarchi. Oh, yeah, Greta actress. Sketchy, my, she, my mum once taught Greta Sarchi there you uh, go. At, at Hayworth Primary School. Yeah. There you go. She's famous. How was she in Haywards Heath? I thought she was from Italy or something. Yeah, you would think so, right? Yeah. I, think, I don't think she was there for long. Okay. I think a lot of people move out. Bross went to my school. No. Yeah, but only for a year. Both of them. They both the twins went to my school. Yeah. Wow. They both got off with Bridget Seely, who I fancied. Oh, and, you're uh, kidding! Yeah. But what they both got off with someone who you hold on a minute. <laughs> how old are you? Uh, I'm t- two. I'm fifty. I'm two. They're both. And how four, old are Bross? They're forty-eight, I think. Oh, they were, are they? Was, they were two years below I was us. Thinking they were, they're like kind of twenty-six or something. Still. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they were famous when they were yeah, young, yeah. and that. So like, well, how can they be old? Yeah. It's the same thing. Uh, Anna Sewell, the writer of Black Beauty, lived in New England Road. Did she? Yeah, that's a proper famous person. Yeah, okay. He had a lot of choices. It's almost like you never lived in Hayward's Heath and have pretended to show off to people. That would be a weird thing to pretend, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would. That really would. But me, Hayward's Heath. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have got two got kids who are both teenagers, nearly grown up. I mean, oh, grown yeah. up adults. And, and I've got two children who are very small. Uh, uh, I was wondering what you thought. I kind of trying to work out whether it's best to remain single until you're about 40 and then have kids Mm -hmm. it's not the best this that's definitely not best because you have kids when you're old and it's hard or is it better you've had your kids quite young and they've grown up and now you're a single man about town as far as i'm aware yeah no Uh, it's great it's amazing yeah it's certainly i think it's the right way around to do it do you think so yeah well i think so because i think if you're single in your 20s as a man yeah women still have you know you're still an idiot. Yes. You know, whereas in your 40s, there's, there's, I think there are fewer kind of nice, kind, funny men in their 40s <laughs> who aren't married to somebody or desperately trying not to be married to somebody. So I think, I think, you, I think it's probably better yeah. in your 40s than in your 20s. I think your 20s is quite I mean, it's hard to, to look single. after kids when you're old, but then, oh. but then it's kind of hard when you're young as well because it's, it's quite a responsibility. It's really hard, but it's much easier <laughs> <laughs> than when you're old. And also you get to the point where they are old, which is amazing. I mean, honestly, yeah. it's like they've, you know, they're, not, they're not just not at home. You think, <laughs> and when they are at home, they get up at like 1 p.m. or yeah. something. Oh, my God, it's just a joy. Yeah, it'd be it's nice. such a joy. <laughs> but I think back to the, you know, because people, you know, I have I've been in relationships where people have wanted kids and you do yeah. you genuinely have to say i just can't i just haven't done 18 years of it i i don't think i could put myself through it again the novelty is what gets you through yeah and to do 18 years if i started again now i'd do 36 years that's like <laughs> half of my life bringing up children yeah and they're kind of you know i love them but yeah. come on <laughs> i'm kind of thinking if i can die in the next two or three years yeah. If you, if you die in the next couple of years, you have absolutely got away with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they'll be quite cute, but they won't remember me. It won't be a big deal. Yeah, it'll be absolutely fine. The grief and, will be uh, fine. And everyone will just go, oh, yeah, I, just, I knew your dad. He was, <laughs> what a great guy. Honestly, he's a really, really good guy. Yeah. And he loved you yeah. so much. That's true. <laughs> That's my plan. But you've had someone, people have proposed to you on Twitter. I mean, you are the, you know, you were the work, work, Heat Magazine Weirdest Crush in 2011. I was, I was second last year as well. Were you? Wow. To who, who beat you? This? Someone from EastEnders. Oh, right. I didn't know. Dirty but Den. Pro- Dirty Den. Pro- Dirty Den, yeah. Dirty Den. I think it was Barry from EastEnders. Really? Like <laughs> he's very good at pointless, isn't he? He's, he's very brilliant. good. He's, he's very brilliant good at, pointless. at pointless and a lovely fella. Yeah. Um, but you've had people propose to you on Twitter. How do you... How yeah, do you... but I think everyone has. I, I, mean, no, everyone. I, don't think, I don't think anyone seriously thought, okay, my objective <laughs> is I would like to marry this guy. I know how to deal with this. I will ask him if he'll marry me. People, by and large, actually usually say, would you marry my mum? <laughs> That's what... Uh, you're one of the few people who has not said that. Um, <laughs> for, for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, you know, you'd always get kind of, uh, yeah, 20-year-olds saying... You, you know, you'd be perfect for my mum. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Did you turn I up? Yeah, yeah. I, turn well, up with a bunch of flowers. I, I've married a couple of them. <laughs> Some people talk, like Gary Newman married the president of his own fan club. 
Yes, he that's did. That's a bit. That's got to be. Well, the a bit even weird. weirder thing is Gary Newman is older than Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> That blows your mind more than this, this other planet, right? <laughs> Do you think you could do, like, World Cup of Things, I think it could be expanded out. Would you ever do one of the worst? Because I, I think that might be interesting, the, the World Cup of the worst. Because you're the best animal, what, was the, what would be the worst animal? The worst right? animal, yeah, well, you, you, I guess you could do it the other way around very yeah. easily with things, with things like that, yeah, yeah, the worst animal. And um, best animal, I've just done a big book tour, and that's one of the ones we do. I get loads of kids up on stage, and we vote on the, we, we do all of those uh, competitions. Uh, and um, dog wins surprisingly. I've always sort of assumed that dog would win all the time, but like yeah. hedgehogs and stuff like that win. <laughs> meerkat has yet to. I always assume meerkat would win, yeah. but it doesn't. Yeah, what's so the worst? I mean, animal? It, when you're given a choice between like I think it was a hamster or a tiger, I mean that's quite hard. That's quite. You're not really thought about that before. That's quite a hard choice to make. I mean, Lisa, you've just done an entire book of questions. I like know, that. but it's quite. A, it's quite a hard choice to make. So it's. That's I don't gonna think be quite it random. is because I would go tiger. Yeah, I would. Go, I, th I would have thought tiger would win every time for the whole thing. But that's... so it turns out it was an easy one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but the whole competition. That'd be for me. But I think you don't really think about animals. What's the worst animal? The worst animal. Uh, yeah. Well, I just. I don't think a crocodile has a lot to commend it. Oh, come on, they've survived all this time. Oh, yeah, that's fine. But, so, you know... So they can climb trees, I read the other day. Oh, come on, that's the last thing I need to hear. <laughs> I was like that with tigers. I yeah. watched a documentary where a tiger climbed a tree. Yeah. I thought, genuinely, it's the only thing I would do if I saw a tiger is climb a tree. Yeah. And now I can't even do that. Don't it's do taken that. that away from me. But really, crocodiles have very... They're, they're not cute. No. Not particularly tasty. Uh, and they, and they, they'll kill you. They do kill lots of people. You know, that's not good, is it? No. They've got, they got very little to commend them. I say in the book, I was talking about cows, and say cows have the unique distinction of being really tasty and not cute. And that's so unfortunate for them. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's like the worst thing you can be, right? Because yeah. we, we don't eat, you know, penguin, and it's because they're cute. I mean, you do eat penguins, so don't you? That is the thing. Oh, the penguins. Bars, yeah. We eat penguins. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> Can only think of chocolate bars. What I think? Can you do World Cups of STDs and things like that? Would you think of doing that? You, I guess you could do. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure how you'd you be judging it, it particularly. Well, you'd have to get all the STDs. Well, I mean, just listen. To, yeah. I know someone you can ask about. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do it. I think you definitely should do it. Do you like Suede, the band Suede? Uh, yeah, I like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of yeah. their work. I've certainly seen them a lot. <laughs> you like music a lot, because if you go on your IMD page, they have like quotes, of mm. uh, lots of people's quotes, and all your quotes are, I really like Wichita Lineman, and there's, really? uh, there's all these quotes that are just what bands you like. What, presumably from Pointless or something. I guess, I don't said, know. Yeah. Or, or whenever I'm when Pointless with music or film, I always say if I think a film is good yeah. or TV, I always yeah. think that's quite nice. And then people tweet me and say, oh, I watched that film because you said it and it was yeah. good. But um, yeah, I kind of like music. Yeah. But I, as I get older and older, I realise I like it less than some other people. But some people really like music, don't they? They do, yeah. I always assumed I did. I like comedy. Yeah, that's what well, I like. that's what that's I've always liked love. comedy. I don't comedy really like Comedy and music. telly. Music, I'm like, yeah, I yeah. like a good song. Yeah. But I would never go and see a... I'm going to see a gig. Oh, kill me. <laughs> they go on so long. <laughs> Literally. I was talking to someone, that, the, the, the writer, Dan Schweimer, said eight songs. That's the most you should ever do in a gig. And I, I, honestly, if, if a band came off after half an hour, I would say, thank you. Thank you so much, Kasabian, for saving me all that time. <laughs> Where people go, oh, we went to see Springsteen. He did two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, most things are too long. Awful. I mean, imagine if we like did two of these in a week. It would that would be that'd be too that'd be too much to sit through. It's one of them's long, isn't it? Come on, it's gone and go for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, I don't. No, like I don't it. really. But you like you like. People worked out ten years ago that going to comedy is more fun than going to yeah. concerts. They were to, yeah, I do like Suede. I'm a big fan. I'm a very, very big fan. Yeah. And, I, and whenever I watch them, I'm very, very proud of my brother as well. It's lovely. It's lovely to see him. Was he, he must have been famous before you were famous. Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, it was in my was early that weird 20s. Having... When I was, when, yeah, when I was at university. Yeah. 
It was amazing. I mean, because for three or four years, they were like the biggest. I mean, they were huge. Yeah. No, it was fantastic. I mean, yeah. it was just a joy. And, you know, you get to go around the world and see and play and get to go to festivals and, you know, you get backstage passes to things, which when you're 20 is amazing. I remember being at um, Benny Cassin outside. Um, uh, it wasn't Benny Cassin, but it was some festival just outside Barcelona. And I'm standing on the side of the stage and it's to David Bowie watching them. And you think, well, I mean, that's quite, you know, that's quite nice. It's not an opportunity I would have had. But um, he's the loveliest man as well. So I'm very proud of him. David Bowie or your brother? <laughs> My brother. Okay. Bowie, I can live without. Okay. <laughs> he had his moment. Uh, uh, would you have liked to have been in a rock band? No. Nah. No. And that's why it's lovely. That's why, because there was never like an ounce of yeah. jealousy. But I just couldn't. I'm just not cool. I'm the least cool person in the world. He was always cool. All of him and Brett, all of them. I remember being in Barcelona and walking this beautiful, the Ramblas in Barcelona. You see, it's so colourful and, you know, it's flowers everywhere and this bright sunshine. And then suddenly there's these five people entirely clad in black. Entirely, <laughs> sunglasses, just heavy black clothes. And of course it's suede walking down the middle of the Ramblas. You just think, how can you, do, how can you be that cool? You know, so <laughs> I've never had a cool gene. He got every single bit of cool in the family. Yeah, but who's laughing now? You're doing uh, pointless. So who's, who's <laughs> laughing? Who's cool now? Right? Yeah. yeah. Does he get to come and stand out backstage and pointless? And well, he comes, actually, fun, funny enough, yeah. if I, you know, when I do like, have I got this view and stuff like that, he comes down and brings people. So it's quite nice. Yeah. That's a bit of quid pro quo. Yeah, but no, he's still cool. They're all still cool. I think if you do a lot of heroin in your 20s, you stay. <laughs> there's something about it that preserves everything. They're all like, they're all whip it thin. They yeah. look great. You know, they're all, it's like amazing. <laughs> it's like they were, it's like they're preserved, yeah. you know? Well, a little bit of advice for any youngsters at home from, Rich, from Richard Osman, I can't see that. A little bit of Christmas advice. I personally, I don't, personally, on behalf of the BBC, I don't condone no. taking heroin. Were you ever into, I mean, no, you don't have to answer this, but I, I was never into taking no, drugs. Not really. I'm a, I'm a really, I'm a, I'm a really good drunk. And I think if you're a good drunk, what, yeah. I don't know why you need anything else. You know, booze is so available and yeah. cheap and you don't have to go to some dodgy estate in Dalston to get it. You can literally get it at the end of your road. And it's like, it, you just think, whatever people say about other drugs, you just think, I don't think it is better than, than this. This is yeah. like, I'm so happy. And I'm, I feel entertained. I'm endlessly entertained. I know when to stop. I know when to start. I've got complete control over it. I don't know, I don't know if I've got room for another drug beyond it alcohol is nice. in my life. Do you, um, I, my, I started getting very bad hangovers in my mm -hmm. 30s and 40s, but th now I don't get them anymore. Is that I've, I've, you don't I've drink got a, I've got a, now I drink and I've started drinking loads again. And I, it's brilliant. <laughs> I think it's because I've got kids and so you're tired anyway. And so you I don't really also tell. I think sometimes if you drink, sometimes maybe you're at a nice restaurant yeah. and you're drinking better booze. So no, maybe no, you just I'm got just, richer. Oh, really? You're still, no, still sitting at, on Shepherd's Bush Green drinking yeah, Thunderbirds? <laughs> I mean, in a way, it's irresponsible to get drunk when you're looking after two tiny children, but I would say, yeah, you just have to hope but, nothing happens, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> when you li I live in the middle of the countryside, you know, if anything, I just think, yeah. what, what if there was an accident now? Yeah, but you know what? Imagine doing it sober. Oh, my God. It would be awful. Yeah, it would be awful. <laughs> Too much. It's, not, it's unthinkable. <laughs> I'll ask some of my new emergency questions. One of my new emergency questions is, uh, what's the worst animal? And that was before I... Uh, have you um, ever fallen downstairs? Ooh, Talking of being drunk. That's a good question. Thank you. I don't think I have, but I fell over the other day. Oh, yeah. That's for like the first time in about 10 years. Right. I was walking, because it's slippy these days, because of, of the leaves, and I was walking back to the gym, I properly fell over. And even as I was falling, I knew I was going to be okay. okay. Uh, but even as I was falling, I thought, goodness me, I'm falling over for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> And I hit the ground. And it was one of those things where it, it would have been absolutely perfect. I mean, but there was someone on the other side of the road. Go, yeah. Oh, that's the last thing I need. <laughs> she was very concerned. I said, no, honestly, I'm fine. Uh, but yeah, God, it yeah. was a real experience. I mean, when you fall over, it must be hard. Yeah. Right? It must be a hard I fall. Mean, I fall further down than almost you do. anybody. <laughs> you do. Um, okay, what is... Um, who is your favourite Quaker? <laughs> that's a good question. Thank you, it is. Uh, Charlie Brooker. Is he a Quaker? His parents were Quakers. Were yeah. they? Yeah. He's the, so he's the only Quaker I know, is the That's truth. Good. I like the one off the oats. <laughs> I guess so. I like Shaken Stevens. Uh, yeah. I like him. Is he a Quaker or is he just quaking? Well, quaking, shaking. quaking and shaking are very okay. similar. <laughs> they, are similar. <laughs> they are very similar things, aren't they? Okay. And in an earthquake, you shake. Right? You do. You're not saying, oh, I was really quaking. <laughs> you would say I was shaken. So yeah. I think they're interchangeable. Shaken Stevens, if you ever asked on Pointless uh, who 
got a name of a solo artist who got a number one in the 1980s? Shaking Stevens would have been a very good answer. <laughs> Think about that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe, can't believe. Shaking Stevens, who was the most popular artist in the 1980s, mm -hmm. zero points on Pointless. I, think I know, he, he came on and sang um, uh, uh, Merry Christmas, everyone, oh, on, did, on yeah. last year's Christmas thing. Yeah. Very lovely it was. He's a really nice fella. Yeah. I'm feeling so Christmassy. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Only... Well, it's funny you should mention that, because backstage, coming on right now... Oh, here he is. It's yeah. uh, Brian Ferry. <laughs> did not get a solo number one in the 1980s <sighs> or at all. I'm over it. It's only X more days till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're watching this at a later date, till the next one. Well, it's still Backwards. only X more days, isn't it? <laughs> there are, there are. It's just, it must be like 341. <laughs> okay, I think, you're gonna, I think this is going to be a good question to end on, and you have an amazing anecdote to go with this. Okay. What do you most regret destroying with fire? <laughs> Well, that is, uh, goodness me. Well, I, I would have to say, I don't know if anyone else has said this, I'd have to say Windsor Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I just... You know, like, you know, it's fun to watch the flames in it and see it, but actually, the next morning, I was a bit, oh, mate, that was a... That's a, <laughs> that's a bit much. Yeah, it was a bit much. Uh, there's a drawing. My, my daughter who claims she drew the Muppets, that's an example of a drawing. That's, that's something yeah, she drew. She's got something there. <laughs> it's interesting to think if your daughter, if your daughter, who's two and three quarters, had been on point of celebrity, she would not have done worse than you. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Statistically, she would have gone out at the, pretty much the same point. Yeah, it's not fun. I'm very good at pointless. No, you, I know you I'm are. Very That's why, good. But you know what? That's the only reason it's funny. Yeah. It's ex you know, if it, you, honestly, if you were thick, it would not be funny at all. <laughs> it's it just like, yeah, no, he comes, yeah, he's fine. He's, he's fun to have on, but you know, he's, not, he's never going to do well. The fact that you are clearly capable of winning a pointless trophy, but it is eluding you for a number of different reasons. <laughs> You know, it's like any great hero's quest, isn't yeah, it? The it obstacles is. put in your way. You're like Indiana Jones and the Pointless Trophy. It is. <laughs> well, getting closer and closer. And then the last, the, against Wolfie from Citizen Smith, two, there was two points in the final question. It's just like, uh, I thought, oh, it's definitely, they've definitely beaten us. And then it came, it was coming down and going, oh, maybe I'm, oh, maybe I'm going to, oh, no. You see, I, I yeah. just, I fucking love this. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you actually in control of where it ends up? Oh, imagine if I was. <laughs> just got a little one. Oh. I'm just going to decide who wins, like a kind of lovely. pointless god. I just keep you on a string like a year, <laughs> like thirty years. <laughs> you keep coming back. It would ruin it if I'd won it. It's you know. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. You're, you're allowed to come back if you've won. Do you have yeah, people back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. People, have, people have won a couple yeah. of times. Mm. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure on me for next time if I if there is a next you know if the series carries on with there's no guarantee. Yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> there's no guarantee. I'm very aware of that. I'd lo you know what I would love for you to win it before either a the show gets cancelled or b you die. Whichever happens. <laughs> I think it will outlive. I think pointless will outlive. I me. will. I'm willing to bet you that it won't. <laughs> I'm willing to have like a Deadpool bet of twenty pounds that you live longer than pointless. Okay, I'll take that bet. <laughs> I don't think I can win that bet, I'm not sure. Uh, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, will you please give a massive round of applause? It's Richard Osman! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Christmas! Thank Have a lovely Christmas! Christmas. Buy his book. It's genuinely amazing. Buy his book. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>